Senator Sylvia. Senator Dinitale. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Uh, before I go to the details of the issue of the GP co-payment, I, I want to uh, reference the matter of public importance today, the title of which is The Impact of the Ab Abbott Government's GP Tax and Medicine Price Hike on Pensioners, the Poor and the Chronically Ill. Uh, I want to say something about that because the members of the coalition would be surprised to hear that um, I don't think this is a GP tax. I don't think it has any of the hallmarks of a tax. I, I think um, it's quite clearly a co-payment. It takes us closer to a user pay system. And in fact, I've deliberately avoiding, avoided using the word tax. And let me tell you why. Um, when this issue first came up, we considered calling this a, a GP tax, and I resisted it. I resisted it because. Every time we run around in this place and we use the word tax in this sort of context, what we do is we undermine those effective, fair and efficient taxes that allow us to be able to fund universal health care, insurance, income support, education and so on. Uh, you see, Taxation is the price you pay for a civilised society, and um, I am, for one, someone who supports progressive taxation, who supports a taxation on uh, resource consumption. I think taxes can be a good thing if collected wisely and spent wisely. And that's why I think it's a mistake to refer to this as a GP tax. This is a co-payment that works in precisely the opposite way to which a fair health system should work. A fair health system should be based on the principle of fair taxation. The more you earn, the more you pay. And at the point of delivery, at the point of access of the service, everybody gets access to that service. That's the way taxes should work. Uh, Senator Sasselge is right. Health care is not free. Um, it's not free under the current system. If you're a high income earner, you pay more into the system. You pay more into our health care system, and you should be entitled to access it. So this isn't a tax. This takes us away from that important principle and moves us closer to a user pay system in health care, which is both expensive and unfair. You only need to look at the US to see that in action. What underpins this co-payment is the notion that our health care system is unsustainable, and it's simply not borne out by the evidence. Uh, we have had inquiries into out-of-pocket health care costs. We have had inquiries into the PBS co-payment. Uh, we have had inquiries into the move from private health insurers into the health space in primary care. And we have heard the same story over and over and over again. We have got a good health system. It is sustainable. And by world standards, people get access to one of the best health care in the country, uh, in the world. Uh, so, uh, let's, let's look at some of those facts. We spend about 9 per cent of our GDP on health care. By OECD standards, that is below the average. That is below the OECD average. Health care spending at a Commonwealth level has been stable for more than a decade. I say that again. Health care spending by the Commonwealth has been stable as a proportion of GDP for more than a decade. We're on track to have a very small increase in our health care spend over the next 10 years. And the opposition would have, or the, the, sorry, the uh, government would have you believe that that is due to health care costs spiralling out of control. Not at all. The small increase, maybe a half to another percent of GDP on health care over the next decade, taking us to the OECD average spend, is because people are getting access to new life saving treatment. Healthcare technologies continue to develop all the time, and we're in the enviable situation where we are providing people with the means to live longer, healthier, more productive lives. That's not a crisis. That's something to celebrate. And if the whole pro uh, uh, proposition uh, that we all uh, believe in, which is that we should strive for economic growth, um, and development, if that's not to provide the dividend, which is better health care, then what the hell are we doing in this place? 
I mean, you ask people time and time and time again, what do you want your governments to be spending money on? Health and education. Thank you, uh, uh, Senator Billick. Health and education. People say it time and time and time again. The whole point of economic progress is to be able to provide people with the means to spend uh, money on the things that they value, and that is health and education. Now, there's this notion that people visit the GP too frequently. Um, again, not born out by any evidence. It is true. It is true that some people visit the doctor unnecessarily. That is, that if they d don't visit a doctor, their symptoms would resolve and they wouldn't be any worse off because of it. But the whole point of having a trained health workforce is so that people who don't have the means to be able to distinguish between what is a serious uh, symptom and one that is benign is that they can get that advice and reassurance from a trained health professional. As a former GP, I can tell you that a lot of what we did was to be able to assess, diagnose and provide people with reassurance. That's what the job involves. That's not a wasted visit. That's actually quite important because the person sitting at home with that pain in their chest, who doesn't know if it's indigestion or the early signs of a heart attack, needs to have a professional assessment of those symptoms. And that's what visiting a GP does. That's what visiting a GP does. You put a price barrier in front of a patient. You can be guaranteed, you can be absolutely guaranteed that we will deter some of those necessary visits. That person sitting at home with chest pain who's worried about could this be a heart attack, no, it's probably indigestion, will be influenced by the fact that they will, have to be, um, they will have to face a charge to see the GP, potentially to have that blood test or X-ray and, and have, them have their script filled by a doctor, all of which um, will absolutely deter some of those necessary visits and, as a consequence, cost our health system more because people will end up in emergency departments and, uh, uh, and in intensive care units because simple, treatable, preventable problems uh, were missed in the first instance. That's why this is such a short-sighted policy. There are so many, many things that we can do to improve the efficiency of our health system. Uh, many things. We can invest much more in uh, health promotion and illness prevention. Um, we should be doing that. We know, for example, in a study uh, by Deakin and Queensland universities that the 20 best prevention strategies, based on good evidence, would cost us about $4 billion and return $11 billion in savings. We know that. And yet, at the same time as we introduce this copay, we're dismantling the preventative health agency. Not just short-sighted in terms of the impact it has on the lives of ordinary people, but short-sighted because it will cost us money. And we also, in medicine, do too many things that aren't based on good evidence. Uh, we should be funding what works. A lot of what we do adds very little value, and there's a big opportunity, a big opportunity to start looking at the current Medicare uh, list and reviewing um, how we fund a number of procedures that add very little value. The number of arthroscopies that we do in this country, for example, many of them unnecessary. Vitamin D testing, um, new and complex forms of prostatic surgery add very little value but a, a lot of cost. Of course, it means taking on some big interests, but we need to do that if we're going to get, make our already effective and efficient system more efficient. Um, we need to make sure that we um, resist the temptation, the great folly that is to assume that moving towards a user pay si uh, system, introducing a price signal, is going to make the system any more efficient. It won't. You only need to look at the international evidence to look at those countries that base their health system on fair taxation and universal access versus those that adopt the notion of user pays in health. And what you see is a recipe not just for a less fair system, which is obviously something I'm concerned about, but also a much more expensive system. It's why the US spend double what we do on health care and get much worse health care 
as a result. This is bad policy, it's unfair, it's inefficient and it must be stopped.